in Jeremiah 33 the Bible says call upon me and I will answer and show you things which thou knowest not now it is important to know that God must walk with man there must be a cooperation between God and man for greatness to come so look at what God is telling us his arm saved by bringing his light what is that light for direction that light is showing you what you must do so what God did was that when his arm came down he gave them directions on what to do because that arm of the Lord cannot give you money that arm of the Lord can only give you directions on how to make the money sometimes when the arm of the Lord comes it is to review relationships you should never play with your arm oh Lord gave them victory through the light of your countenance so if you cannot see what God is showing you cannot seize what God is given if you cannot see what the Holy Spirit is revealing you cannot receive what the Holy Spirit is releasing he called unto Jeremiah he said what seest thou he said I saw a candlestick and an olive he said thou hast seen well I will hasten my word to perform it he said to Abraham look as far as your eyes can see that I will give unto you so men will always apprehend what they are able to see your sight is your size your sight is your size you can't grow bigger than your sight as far as your eyes can see that i will give unto you and direction is what brings distinction you cannot be distinguished until you are directed so men are stagnated men are where they are because they have not been able to see what god is showing we look with our eyes but you see with your mind as a man thinketh in his heart so you say you look with your eyes but you look you see with your mind you look with your eyes but you see with your mind what can you hear what can you hear that's why you must not joke with the presence of god the presence of god is the place where perceptions are changed where signals are downloaded when god releases vital revelations that are quintessential element for your bourgeoning for your development in life and in destiny habakkuk chapter 2 verse number one give it to me new living translation i will climb up to my watchtower and stand on my guard post there will i be able to see what the lord will say and how i will answer when he says it i will stand on my watchtower and from that place i will hear what the lord has to say so the presence of god is the place of instructions the presence of god is the place of instructions in the place of worship in the place of prayer you will hear do it this way when you get to your workplace sack this person yes the holy spirit might tell you this one is the back door through which the finances of your business goes out every instruction is received at the watchtower that's the place of prayer now when we talk about prayer you must not be kneeling down it is creating an atmosphere of the presence of god wherever you are creating an atmosphere so when you don't know what to do stop cracking your brain and crack heaven then heaven will send codes that will be deciphered into your human spirit of what to do when jesus came to the earth one of the phenomenal things i love about him the bible say he knew what to do at all times so jesus was never out of ideas and the owner of idea will rule the world he was never 
out of ideas that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened that they will be able to know what is the hope of their calling so you can't know people until your eyes open now i want to ask you a question how do you see yourself when i got married to my wife we were not quarreling no issue in fact she's a very peaceful woman very quite peaceful woman very but i looked at her i said you cannot feed me i said instead of you feeding me i will die i said the day you feed me i will die she said we are not quarreling i said no you cannot she said why what if i said there is no what if no what if you cannot Because I got into the marriage with a walking revelation that he who cannot provide for his family is worse than an unbeliever. Hmm. I'm not saying when we when you hear he who cannot provide for the family, some women have sat down. My husband be hearing it. I'm not talking about your extravagant lifestyle. I'm not talking about a week of three hundred thousand when the salary of your husband is forty thousand. You must be realistic to know what is provision. Provision is not your excesses. He can come to a point where he can buy the week of 300,000 or 3 million to a point. But if he's not at that point now, don't push him to do that. Am I talking to somebody here? Everyone on earth is at a certain season. There were seasons of our lives when we could not even afford a generator. There were seasons of our lives where we had to hire a keyboard. I remember the first time they brought a camera to me we wanted to have a program and they brought a camera and the guy that brought the camera then so said that the camera was about 300,000 I grew so angry I told the people how did you bring this guy how can I buy a camera of 300,000 but today the, the story has changed the cameras alone running millions and then done without stress so there are phases to things know the stage your family is in and don't ever because of the evening season of another person compare it with your morning season men are in different seasons am i talking to somebody here and it is the seasons of men per time that determine their sizes so they no no discover the season your husband is in and help grow him help him to grow when we talk about he who cannot provide for the family basic the one you can you might not be able to train your child in a school of two million per time but you can do twenty thousand per time you are doing well you might not be able to buy meat of fifty thousand but you can do that of two thousand you are doing well you might not buy him pork now you might not take three hundred thousand to go and buy him pork you may be buying weekly because your money is still coming weekly keep growing don't be discouraged and follow that man and grow with him this christmas what he has for you is to tell you use hundred thousand just see what you can buy see what you can buy for your for your for our children and then you know it's not like he has seven hundred thousand and he's giving you hundred even if he has seven hundred thousand the seven hundred thousand should not be spent on christmas alone remember that january is 90 days if you are spending this christmas remember that january is the only moon that is 90 days january had a go ago have you noticed it so spend wisely spend wisely another christmas will come if you are a woman that loves flexing it's not a problem flex with your money simple is that not simple make the money and flex with it don't trouble somebody's son <laughs> except that somebody's son has grown to be troubled but even when he grows don't be wasteful God is against waste did you hear what I just said did you hear what I just said did he bless you some of you why are you frowning in your face <laughs> amen amen 
Encourage your spouse to save money. Encourage your spouse to build for tomorrow. I have a man that made millions. He got a contract of over a billion. He made a lot of money. He would come to functions and spray more than three million standing up. The wife wore all manner of gold. The wife was so expensive. When a man is too riotous, when a man is too extravagant and spending, oftentimes, watch the wife. If that man married a good woman, the woman would have stepped it down. The woman would have helped. I know there are men, but if that man married a good woman, it wouldn't be the same. After the man died, he doesn't have a property anywhere. Not anywhere. And you know the children grew as the children of now a big man. How will they go to certain people? Build for the future. Don't be an insult that eats up everything he has. How is it that on the day that Esau would be blessed, it still shook me and shocks me. It still shocks me. It shook me and it still shocks me. The day that Esau was to give the father just a little venison that may have come from one lap of an animal. He didn't have an animal at home. And it was his brother who was not a hunter that had an animal. Because anytime he came back, he would bring an animal that was injured Jacob would not sit back to life and Jacob was keeping an animal husbandry farm at the back Esau knew that anytime he took his bow and his weapon he would get into the bush and he would kill so he believed it will be coming constantly that's what a lot of people do because you keep saving money every month my salary will keep coming this money will keep coming you open your shop you sell you have not learned how to conserve the world. There are people, no matter the fall they have, they have what to fall back at. Just one thing they have, they can be resurrected. And help is good. Helping people is powerful. But help with wisdom. Don't be blackmailed into helping people. Somebody said to me, how can I have someone like you and be suffering? Meanwhile, you are not even my immediate family. According to the story, it is my great-grandmother that senior the great-grandmother that senior the great-grandmother. She said, how can I have someone? Meanwhile, you just appeared. I don't know you. We've never... I don't know you. You may have been coming when they said I was small. You said I wanted to fall into hot water. You were the one that brought me out of the hot water. And then she said, how can I be suffering when I have someone like you? I said, my sister, all of us have God. I said, if you have me, we will get, we may go have God. Have God. A help with wisdom. What did I say? You are not an El Shaddai. If you answer El Shaddai, you will be I shall die. This Christmas, we've done an amazing thing. A lot of people, we have someone, I, meanwhile, we have, by the special grace of God, several bags of rice. Someone gave us 200 bags to share. One of my daughters, again, uh, who stays abroad, gave us close to 100 bags. I, for myself, I got about 100, I think 160 something bags or thereabout. We help people. It's good. We have people pulling in fund to celebrate Christmas for people. The less privileged, the widows. This is beautiful. We just came back from a very, very glorious one yesterday for a lady that did uh, widows banquet and gave to widows money and all of that. It's good. Powerful. The Bible said that he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. But what I'm saying is if all you do is to give to the poor, poor only, 
everything that comes to your hand you give to the poor everything that comes to your hand, you don't save and you don't give to god you will soon resemble the poor yes give with wisdom set aside the one to invest set aside the one to give to god set aside the one to give to your family and when you want to help begin from your jerusalem jesus said this is how to preach the good news the good news talks about help he says start from your jerusalem your jerusalem is your immediate circle your family your circle immediate circle then get to your judea get to your samaria don't go to samaria don't go to do giveaway online when someone close to you is starving don't don't ever go to motherless baby's home when there is a motherless baby in your own family who is not being clothed you didn't hear what i said begin from your jerusalem there are a couple of people that will come online and say i want to share five five thousand even some of you do it Two hundred thousand enters your hand i want to my fans i want to give you two two thousand fifty thousand twenty five persons drop your meanwhile your mother does not have rice who are you impressing we we are raised by god to express his image and not to impress men paul said that we called on two men he said we live to the glory of one and his god it is only his opinion that matters only his opinion only his opinion because you will always be misrepresented by people jesus asked them what do people say i am many people attended the ministry of jesus not one could be able to say he's the christ all of them said he's jeremiah isaiah elijah they misrepresented him and then he asked the 12 who do you say i am there was silence even the 12 could not answer except one who said you are christ the son of the living god so you will be misrepresented people will misunderstand you you'll be hated there is nothing you will do to please people if you give everyone ice cream soon they will say you are attacking them with diabetes so help with wisdom am i talking to somebody here tell your neighbor help with wisdom always listen to your intuitive man and then once god has led you do it even if it is all you have do it make sure you are led by god don't be led by fluttering emotions don't be led by fluttering emotions and i want to teach you something about giving should i no i will not say it i should say it if you make a promise to someone <laughs> I should say that thing. You are you are asking me to say that thing. Some people will misunderstand it. Then may God give you understanding. If you make a promise and you notice you were spontaneous with that promise, that you made a mistake. You know, there are givings you do, you know that this is not right. Am I talking to somebody? You didn't hear what I said. There are givings you do. You know that this is what? Like, let me give an illustration so you can understand it. When I was living in Unubi, I, I used, I've always done uh, widow stuff at the end of the year. So that particular season we had done in the church, it, I think it was in 2012. Or 2013 we are done in the church we have not gotten married to okay i think we are married already so there were some bags of rice or we hadn't married i kept at home and then some people were coming and then a particular woman came and said uh i heard you are giving to widows i'm a widow she came with someone so i said okay come back in the evening that there are a couple of people also coming by the time they went downstairs, I was also going downstairs to do something. I hear, tum, 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 tum. the woman entered the car, even that kind of car, I can't own it. I saw then, she entered the car. 
And then she drove us. She said, man of God, I will see you in the evening. I said, okay. So by the time they came back in the evening, I now, I had 10 bags remaining. I had 12 widows. Meanwhile, this one had come back and come in the morning. And then I told her, I said, that car you are driving, is it your? I said, yes, my son, my son. This one is in this country, this one is in this country, this one is in this country, and they are doing well. Remember, I have made a promise. I told her, you are, you are not a widow indeed. I said to her, why not convert your misery to a ministry? Can't you see that where you are already, you shouldn't be going around collecting rice. Instead, call your sons to send rice to give to others. By the time I was done talking to her, she said, I have a couple of things I've collected though, from different widows' places. If these people should follow me home, let me give it to them. So what I'm saying, that you make a promise does not mean you can't break it. You, can, you are not God. If you make a promise by mistake, break it by correction. As soon as you receive sense, tell the person, I made a mistake. <laughs> you know, people can pressure you until you do what you don't want to do. Can be pressured. Am I talking to somebody? Should I say this? A lot of people would have grown bigger if family left them alone. Family problems will never finish. Help with wisdom. Should I go this direction? Your master just settled you. You've not even started. You are still looking for shop. Because you have the heart of family. You are bringing six of your family members to the town. You will eat down, down resources and then come down. There is something that is called crab syndrome. If you put five crabs in a bowl, an experiment was conducted. Put five crabs, they put five crabs in a bowl. And then this crab wanted to climb and saw that it couldn't climb and then rested. Now each time any crab wanted to climb, the other crab would draw it down. Each time they kept drawing each other down, they kept without trying, without trying sufficiently. Until all of them were tired of trying and couldn't go up again. That's what happens when you help without wisdom. I just helped someone now. family identify important ones and solve them the unimportant ones postpone it until it becomes important how can you ask me for money to rent a hall of 200,000 one of my sons came and told me daddy we have done everything I'm looking for money to rent a hall I said, well, you are living around this vicinity and you are going to rent a hall in GRA. You are asking a man who used open field to do his reception, money to rent a hall. <laughs> My reception was in the open field. To be economical, I waited in April and was praying so that rain will not fall. And they are coming to me to ask me for a hall of 200. When, as at that time, there is a decent hall of 30,000 in Royal Palace. But because you married a waster, she wants to impress. When you were done, meanwhile, your business is around Gariki. She told you, I don't like her mate eating. You moved and packed into Transekul. Where are those kind of women? I cast that spirit out in the name of Jesus. Class, class. Just want to be class. Remember, I said flexing is not bad, but if you want to flex, flex with your money. What do I do to provoke the hand of God? 
I've said a couple of things already. But let me round it off with this. Take action is number five. We said four the other day. Take action. Get me Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy my enemy chapter two and verse number 24. Deuteronomy chapter two and verse number 24. This is God speaking. He said, rise, take your journey. Can I see verse number 23 quickly? Quickly verse 23. He says, okay, get verse 24 because of time, because we will have to go back and back and back. Rise, take your journey and cross over the river Amon. Look, I have given into your hand Shinon, the Amorite, king of Hezbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and they engage him in battle. The Lord gave, but he said, you have to take action to receive it. Even though the Lord has given it, action is what brings you into it. If you don't take action, you cannot step in. Do something differently. Stop folding your hand expecting for the hand of God to manifest in your life. Do something differently. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places, in the plain, in the mountains, and in the lowlands. Look at, look at what he was telling them to do. If you see this journey, you must have known that this is not a journey of one day. It was a rigorous one. Even though the Lord gave the land, even though the Lord has promised you a fruitful destiny, then he has to tell you to go to the valley, go to the mountain. If you have a business, don't stay in church and pray alone. Go and do marketing. Go to places. Go to places. Market that product. Tell people about it. Go to the mountains. Go to the villages. Go to the lowlands in the south and in the sea coast to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon as far as the great river how far can you go for your destiny how far can you go you know what it takes for us to do morning devotion every night and then there is also one in the in every morning there is one also in the night do you know the sacrifice especially the prophetic morning the sacrifice it takes us to wake up after prayers have a little snap and then do that morning prayers but i've seen mighty things it has increased my prayer strength also and it has also connected me to uncommon men this is god telling them what to do you have a company how many persons have you spoken to about what you can do do you have a flyer do you share them Use this time you have been using to put phone in your ear, walking around looking for a man to stop you. Use that time and get a product. Get into places and begin to market it. Use this time you have been twisting your leg like a chicken that has gonorrhea. Use that time, get a product and start uploading it on your status and your Facebook page. Use that gossip time and gossip your product. Have you heard? I do this. This is what I do. I can do this. What can you do? What can you do as a young man? What can you do as a young woman? What can you do except growing your hair and your beards and combing it? Except coloring your fingers, staying at home and doing nothing. What can you do? That competence is what will spur you into greatness. The hand of God cannot be reviewed upon the lazy. Did you see where God told? I read this place and I screamed. This is the same principle Jesus adopted. The Bible says that Jesus went about doing good. He went everywhere. He was building bridges. He was building bridges. Was building bridges. Was building bridges. There are a lot of young men that are wasting. Wasting. We know the Lord has promised to the throne like David. The throne has not come. Even after David was anointed king, he had to wait for 30 years. When David was promised kingship, he was still playing guitar for the king. So you have a bigger picture of becoming a billionaire. That's not how it 
comes the lord will take you through the process of first of all being a shepherd boy and you are tested with only two sheep david will let that grow it into 13. from that place the lord will bring you to the house of the king where you will be playing guitar for the king and he was a skilled guitar player and from that place he became the king of judah before he became the king of all israel who has despised the days of little things look at this god told zerubbabel you are going to build a mighty city but what did god give zerubbabel as a material resource to start this it was a plum in his hand a plum sir a plum is one of the smallest equipment of building god didn't give him money he didn't give him wood it was a plum and when he gave Zerubbabel the plum, he said, Do not despise the days of little things, for it shall greatly increase. If you want to go far in life, start from where you are. Engage what you have, no matter how small it is. Moses was crying before the Red Sea. The Lord said, What do you have in your hand? He said, A dry rod. He was looking down on that road. The Lord said, as dry as it may seem, engage it. As soon as he engaged the dry road, the sea parted hither and thither. So Moses was crying before the Red Sea, not knowing he had the capacity to divide the sea. You have been crying for money. There is something crying out for expression in your life. Anytime a man's story must change, the change of that story is not external. It is within why not look inside and ask the lord to open your eyes to see to open your eyes to see in one kings chapter five the bible speaks one kings chapter five or chapter four eight of them the first one speaks of Naaman. the second one speaks of the woman of zarephath one king chapter four speaks of the woman of the prophet's widow sorry the prophet's widow the husband had died and used the children as collateral so she kept on begging and begging she was begging to feed begging from everybody until she met one man who said i will never give to you she was talking to elisha so elisha could lend her some money or dash her some money so that she could go and pay the creditors who are taking her children elisha said what do you have in your house she says small oil elisha said that's how to begin that small space at the front of your house that's how to begin that shop where your husband is staying don't look for another shop get a pos and stay there that's how to begin while you wait for the big things begin small rise to your feet wherever you are start small start small who has despised the days of little things who has despised the days of little beginning the next essential instrument of provoking the hand of god is thanksgiving and that's what we have for today thanksgiving is the hallmark of throne centric worship is the hallmark of throne centric worship thanksgiving is the highest sit down for a minute thanksgiving is the highest expression of faith Thanksgiving is a sacrifice on the altars of our hearts. Those who think well will live well. You can't be great until you learn Thanksgiving. You cannot grow big until you have learned Thanksgiving. I'm going to show us this scripture, it is integral we we'll read it psalms chapter 103 and verse number one psalms 103 and verse number one bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me so look at this when you are praising god you are praising him with everything you have got with everything you've got your innermost being you are going to praise him somebody say with everything tell your neighbor with everything with everything you have got bless the lord all my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name 
all that is within me all that is within me everything in me now why should we do this to be able to do this effectively how do i bless god with everything in me there is one instrument to do that look at verse number two okay he said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits how to bless god with everything you have is begin to name his benefits today is thanksgiving begin to count the benefits you have received of the lord the blessings there is an a very powerful way to begin your life your life breathe in breathe out can you breathe breathe in breathe out did you breathe were you able to breathe breathe in breathe out are you alive are you dead are you dead that's the greatest benefit have you have you ever seen a house stand without a foundation life is the foundation of every other miracle once life is lost every other thing is lost but when you have life you can receive any other thing so if god gives you life he has given you all it takes to live that life well for the fact you are alive you don't have any other reason I show you this is there anyone here that is sick maybe you are having headache or any challenge in any part of your body lift up your right hand thank you lift it very well okay I want to exemplify this oh Please come, sir. please come. Sir. Two of you come. You are having any challenge? Lift up your right hand. Come, 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 sir. mommy. Come, come, sir. come. Sir. Okay. You think I want to pray for you for healing? Let us see. So what is happening to you? Okay. You have a challenge with your eye. Thank you. You have pain in that eye. In that eye, you have pain. Okay. What of you, sir? All size disturbing. All oh, sir. Sir? All size disturbing. All size disturbing you. Since? Almost a month ago now. Almost a month. Mommy? Something is moving inside your body. Good. Waste pain. Waist pain. Constant headache. Constant headache. Headache. Waste pain for over seven years. Waist pain for over seven years. Headache. Headache. Yes. Back pain. Good. So your own is eyes. Also, something is moving around mommy's body. And then this is waist pain. Headache. Headache. And uh, waist pain. Wow. So if you bend down now, you will feel pain. If you bend down. You are feeling the pain, right? Uh, it's not healing I want to do. I want to ask you, those in the mortuary, do they have waist pain? No. Huh? no. Those, the person in the mortuary, can the person feel waist pain? Can the person feel waist pain? They're dead already now. They are dead already. Yes. So for you to feel waist pain is a testimony. <laughs> Sir, the person in the mortuary, does the person have need to see? for you to desire for this your left eye to be touched it means you are alive it's a testimony to have eye pain because those in the mortuary cannot have any eye pain you are pain all over your body the person lying down at the morgue does the person feel any pain if you go and hit the person 50 times will the person feel it so the pain you are feeling is a testimony 
Now I show you this. When you now understand that, so I can feel pain, it means I'm alive. You understand? So my eye is challenged, it means I'm alive. Sir, you have also. And anytime you eat certain things, it disturbs you. Why it disturbs you is because you are alive. Those in the mortuary can't eat, so they can't have ulcer. So you can even eat, is a testimony. When you now begin to count your benefits. Now remember, in counting benefits, don't see what Satan is showing. See what God has done. For me to have headache, it means I'm alive. You have waste pain. For me to be sick, it means I'm alive. Lord, thank you that I can even feel pain at this point. The headache will go at this point the eyes will come alive at this point miracles will happen rise to your feet wherever you are bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefit if you are alive that's the greatest that's the greatest Man of God, I'm having challenges in my business, in my company. But God gave you a company. Thank him for the company and see him change the situation. Lord, I am grateful. Somebody can say, man of God, or somebody would say, man of God, I'm having challenges in marriage. So you even married. Thank him for the marriage and then the challenges will go. What you begin with is see praise in the challenge. Praise him in the storm and the storm will end. Don't pray. The storm is waiting for you to pray. Look at the storm and give thanks. Jesus looked at a dead body. Instead of commanding the dead body to come back to life, he shifted and gave God thanks. Why will you give God thanks at the graveside? He gave thanks. And then after he gave thanks, do you know what he told God? He said, thank you because you hear me anytime I pray and then he was about to pray <laughs> thank you for hearing me anytime I pray and he was about to pray as that prayer rose Lazarus came forth he had few fishes and few bread he lifted it up and gave thanks thank you that we are even able to see few fishes and few bread even though it is not enough thank you that we saw at all that's what Elisha told the woman Go to your house and lock the door behind you. Let the neighbors not know what you are doing. That oil you have despised. That small oil, begin to dispense it. Begin to engage it with thanksgiving. And that's how her oil multiplied. Anytime the devil shows you one million things God has not done, show the devil only one that surpasses the one million things. And that is life his life people in the mortuary a couple of them bought new cars and died a couple of them had buildings a couple of them left all manner of meat in the freezers and died a couple of them had huge accounts before they died a couple of them had visas unused before they died and you are looking for visa would it be okay if God gives you the visa and you are not alive now you don't have a visa but you have life and you are complaining that it's better you are not alive. Why not bless him so that visa can come? Lord, I am not ungrateful. Lord, I'm not ungrateful. You are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to disappoint me, Lord. Oh. You've proven yourself in my life, oh, and I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to fail me. Hey. You are too faithful to disappoint me, Lord. You 
you prove yourself in my life And I've come to realize You're too faithful to fail me I'm the one that you have shown me You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one that you have shown mercy, Lord. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. 